Good evening. Today is Tuesday, January 5th, 2021. I'm Heather Peffley, Clerk for the City of Manistee. The City Council's January 5th, 2021 regular meeting being conducted remotely where all members of the City Council are in separate locations and not at the City Hall Council Chambers will be called to order by Mayor Roger Zielinski shortly. As always, this meeting is being recorded and will be broadcast on Manistee TV cable channels 189 and 190 and available at manisteetv.org. City Council and City staff will have video and audio available for this meeting. Members of the public will be audio only. The microphones of all members of the City Council, the City Manager, City Attorney, and City Clerk will always be live unless there's an audio disruption. Mayor Zielinski, we are ready to proceed with the meeting. Thank you, Heather. Please take the roll. Councilmember Bachman. Here. Councilmember Beaton. Councilmember Beaton. Here. Mayor Zielinski. Here. Councilmember Sipsick. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Shemansky. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Shemansky, you are muted. Can you unmute? Yes, I just got the switch. Okay, good. All right. Councilmember Grabowski. Here. And Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Here. City Manager. Here. City Attorney. Here. Deputy Clerk. Here. DPW Director. Here. Finance Director. Here. Police Chief. Here. Fire Chief. Here. City Engineer. Here. Roll call complete. Thank you. Public hearings, we have none. But before we get started into the agenda, I've been asked to make a, a statement on the Lakeshore Hotel on the process. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone who's sent emails and called and supportive and have some concerns about the project. Citizens should always feel comfortable in contacting their representatives or elected officials and also city staff with any issue, not only this issue. The process, as I understand it, is that this is a, pub, this is a planned unit development. Planned unit developments are approved by the Planning Commission. City Council does not approve or deny the project. With that being said, the Planning Commission will be holding a public hearing. And I would encourage everyone who have any concerns or are in favor of the project to weigh in at that public hearing. Date and time, and if we're still under COVID-19 restrictions, access information will be on the city website. Also, I believe it will be on the, I believe the news advocate will also carry that information. With that being said, we'll move on to the agenda. This is comments on agenda related items. Each person waiting in the virtual waiting room will be called individually by the city clerk by the last four digits of their telephone number. Individuals will be asked if they have a comment or if they are passing. It is very, it is very important that those giving comments have a good phone connection and no sound or noise in the background, there, or there will be a disruptive audio. If the issue cannot be corrected by the caller, we will move on to the next person in line. We will now take public comments for the the meeting topics for those who do not have an agenda are, on the consent agenda tonight, we have approval of minutes, cash balance, revenue and expenses, and notification regarding next work session. Other agenda items are consideration of USDA, APHIS, wildlife services to hold a deer call in the city of Manistee in 2021 at date and time to later be determined. Consideration of approval of a license for agreement with Red E Charging LLC to install four electric vehicle charging stations 
on city property. Consideration of a request from the Oceana County Housing Commission, Manistee Limited, the Divide, Divide, Division, <laughs> Housing Association LP for a payment in lieu of taxes the municipal service agreement for purposes for, for the proposed 49 unit housing development. Consideration of budget amendment 2021 for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2021. Consideration of amending the city fee schedule to include the downtown DDA dumpster refuge rates. Consideration of a contract award and change order number one for the river rock damage and bank erosion repair. Consideration of application and boards and commissions. Presentation of annual state of the street report. We'll now take public comments, Heather. I have several uh, members of the public that have dialed in. So I'm going to ask you to press star nine if you have called in to raise your hand and I will call you um, each individually. And um, if you have logged in on an iPad or a computer, there's also an, a raise hand button that you can press. So if you press star nine, let me know that you have a comment. I will start calling on you. Telephone number ending in 0852. Press star six to unmute yourself. Hi, good evening. Thank you for allowing me to speak. This is Ginny Pelton, 329 First Avenue. Um, I realized that we still would have to go through the planning commission and the city council is not deciding anything on it tonight. But I'm very concerned about the housing structure that's being planned for River Street. I think it might be something to consider a little longer and debate about maybe a better location for this type of unit. Uh, in the past 50 years, there's been a couple decisions made in Manistee um, that maybe were short-sighted. And I just hope that everyone involved considers this a little further. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Telephone number ending in 1144. Hello, my name is Tom H. Amor Jr., uh, 432 Fourth Street. I'd just like to uh, express my positive feedback for the River Water Housing Development and would uh, like to see the council uh, approve the pilot agreement tonight. Thanks. Telephone number 0852. Be sure to press star six to unmute yourself. I think we did that one, Heather. We did that one already? Okay, thank you. It didn't go down for some reason. Okay. Uh, telephone number 8627. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Please state your name and Hi. address. Hi, this is Ted Fricano. I have a purchase agreement to buy 440 West River, former boathouse. The city of Manistee is, and I've said this many times, is one of a few counties that is on the map in Muskegon that is growing, that is thriving. There is a renaissance in Manistee. I understand the desire for this, and I'm, I'm, I'm in regards to the, 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 the 49 unit housing development that would be proposed across the street from what I'm going to create a fantastic uh, restaurant, Fricano's in Manistee. I would not be doing this if it wasn't for the warm welcome that the city council and everyone else has given me. I don't know if the city of Manistee understands how wonderful you are. 
And I believe that you are shortchanging yourself and maybe you need to be patient because bigger and better things are coming your way other than quote unquote affordable housing right on one of the most prosperous downtown streets in the entire state of Michigan. I am going to ask, I'm going to plea for patience. I know there's a desire to make those buildings across the street from 440. And forgive me, I don't know the, the street um, east, or excuse me, um, south of river. I know there's excitement that you want something to happen finally there. But Manistee is on the map. I can't even find a rental to stay in for four months while I'm constructing. I'm going to ask you to please be patient because there is more excitement than a affordable housing development that is proposed. That is not what your prosperous downtown, you have a beautiful college that has been built on the east end with your new uh, hotel that has been built. And what I plan on doing and to the west of, your, of, of the downtown area, please do not underestimate your talents and do not underestimate what is happening to Manistee and allow affordable senior housing. I love the seniors. My mother is 92. I'm not gonna tell you how old I am, but I'm becoming one very quickly. There is other areas for the seniors to prosper and to love that is wooded and beautiful and magnificent, but do not underestimate the talents in the city commission and all of those around you. Please be patient and think about this. I'm not for it, but I'll tell you whatever you guys choose. I love that city of Manistee, and I'm going to make that property wonderful, I promise. Thank you. Does anybody else have a comment? Please press star nine to raise your hand or star six and unmute yourself. I see we have a few other people out there that have not. Hearing none, we can move on, Mayor. Thank you. Unfinished business. Consideration of USDA APHIS Wildlife Services to hold a deer call in the city of Manistee in 2021 at a date and time to later be determined. The USDA APHIS Wildlife Services is requesting an agreement with the city of Manistee to enter into a proposal to propose and hold it in the, for the purpose of holding a deer call in 2021 at a date to be specified in the future. Funds for the deer call for in 2021 have been budgeted. However, an additional amount is being sought by the USDA APHIS Wildlife Services. That amount accurately represents the cost involved with holding the call. The amount previously budgeted for the call was $10,000, and the amount now being requested totals fifteen five. dollars At this time, Council could take action to support and approve the request from the USDA APHIS Wildlife Services to hold a deer call in the City of Manistee in 2021 with the cost of the call totaling $15,500, subject to department approval. Is there a motion? Excuse I'll make a motion. Mayor, you did forget the consent agenda. I am sorry. Thank you for reminding me, Heather. We'll, we'll go to that right after this, if that's all right. Okay. I'll, I'll second that um, motion. Is there any discussion? Um, I have a couple comments I'd like to make. I'm really disappointed in the cost. I don't know if the police have had a chance to go back and, and ask if we could have this at a reduced cost. Um, I'm concerned about ticks. I'm concerned about Lyme disease. I'm concerned about property damage. I'm concerned about car deer accidents. And I'm also concerned that for some reason we have an ordinance not to feed the deer on the books. 
but no one has been cited for feeding the deers. And I'm, I do know that, that the feeding of the deers has happened in the city. People have complained to me. They need to complain to the police department. So I have a number of conflicting ideas on which way to go on this. So I'm anxious to hear from everybody on how, what their feelings are. Council member uh, Beaton, if I could, uh, Josh Glass here. I did go back and ask them what services exactly we would get for our budgeted amount. Um, they advised the services would be the same as far as set up and, and tear down, except for we would only get two hunting events. In the past, we've gotten four hunting events. So essentially the hunting time is, is cut down uh, almost cut in half. Um, so that's what we could get for $10,000. They weren't going to budge as far as providing the same services as last time um, for, the, for the same amount or even a reduced amount. Well, I'm also concerned that we won't be able to make any kind of a donation to the food pantries. And I know this is the year to do it. So I, I know fresh meat is something that is one of the high ticket items. Um, so I would be disappointed if this didn't pass. I, but I am very concerned about the cost. Anybody else? Mayor yes, Dave Bachman. I, go, go ahead, Jim. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. Uh, being I looked at this chart that the chief sent us and the few accidents that we've had, uh, I can't even see a problem. If nobody gets the ticket for anything, I don't think there's that much of a problem. We've had to shoot more deer when they got hung up on somebody's fence than on the uh, any car accidents. So I'm, I'm totally against this. Thank you. Mayor Dave Acker here. Yes, sir. I, um, I've only received three phone calls of people encouraging us to do the deer call. And of those three, I can't. Um, one lady in particular claimed that she has deer poop and ticks in her yard. But we've been doing the deer call for, I think, three years now. And she still has the same issue she's had for three years. So it doesn't justify. But we talked about damage to uh, gardens and such but my worry is one one bullet mishap one mistake with a, with a rifleman is going to be far away any amount of foliage issues we're going to have in the community and i voiced my opposition to this before in the past and my opposition has not changed thank you anybody else well uh, this is mick shemansky and and i agree with uh, ms beaton that uh, it, it seems that that the city or the city is being um, required to to spend an outlandish amount of money for something that really should be handled by the state. The deer belongs to the state, not to us. And it amazes me that the state refuses to do anything. And literally, we've seen the populations grow and grow and grow. And I, I, I'm not an expert. I don't know if uh, the deer calls are as effective as they should be. Uh, there's certainly got to be other ways of controlling it. If these were rats, I don't think, I think the state or other people would be a lot more um, aggressive in trying to eliminate them. Uh, but, you know, again, because they may be pretty to look at doesn't mean that they're not a nuisance and they have they have literally outgrown to the point where I do consider them to be a, a threat and a, and a problem. And if we don't do anything, um, we're going to have a problem in the future. So I do support the deer call. Anybody else? My only concern with with the deer call is that I'm not sure that we're we're calling the deer in the proper places um, over by Fab Light and some of those areas. Those deer live there year round, and we're not we're not deer calls. Um, I don't know if we've looked into possibly moving some of those bait stations over that way. I understood at one time that they they didn't want to do it over there because they didn't feel it was safe. Um, I don't know if that's still true. Doing nothing is not an option. I've received calls from people in my district it, that are in favor of it. I've received no calls um, not, or that were not in favor of it. So I guess I'm going to support this. Anybody else?
Hearing none, please take the roll. Councilmember Bachman? No. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Councilmember Sipsik? No. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Councilmember Gabowski? No. Councilmember Martin Pontiac? No. Motion failed. Thank you. Moving on, we're backing up to the consent agenda. All items marked with an asterisk are on the consent agenda and considered by the city manager to be routine matters. Prior to approval of the consent agenda, any member of council may have an item from the consent agenda removed and taken up during the regular portion of the meeting. Congenta consent agenda items include approval of minutes, cash balance, revenue and expenses, and notification of next work session. Is there anybody that, any council member want anything removed? Hearing none at this time, council could take action to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a motion? I'll, I'll make move. There a second? I'll, I'll second it. Kubowski. I have a motion and a second. Please take the roll. There's no discussion. Council member Bachman? Yes. Council member Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Council member Sipsik? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Council Member Grabowski? Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. <clears throat> considering, under new business, considering consideration of approval of a license permit agreement with Red E Charging LLC to install four electric vehicle charging stations on city property. Red E Charging LLC, which wishes to install four electric vehicle charging stations in the city parking lot located on the southeast corner of Washington Street and Memorial Drive and in the parking lot on River Street. Ready Charging LLC is responsible for all installation, maintenance, repair, and all other costs associated with the installation of the charging stations. At this time, council will take action to authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign the agreement. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion, Grabeski. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing I am no curious whether city staff has looked at other municipalities and what they're charging. I have not. Uh, and and we're not charging anything. We're allowing the use. I know. I'm sorry. I misspoke. How is this in line, though, with other municipalities that are doing this? The only the only thing I can tell you is they they do uh, this company does operate in other municipalities. I haven't asked if the three cents per kilowatt hour is a standard rate or not. Um, you know, what I was looking at was just simply that we're providing a service to visitors or even residents of the community, and we'll, we'll be put on a map uh, that shows charging stations throughout the state. So I thought it was good from those couple of aspects. It costs us nothing to do it, and we get a little bit of money uh, for some cheaper publicity. Anybody else? Hearing none, please take the roll. Council Member Martin Pontiac? Yes. Council Member Grabowski? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Council Member Sipsik? Yes. Mayor Zelensky? Yes. Council Member Beaton? No. Council Member Bachman? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Consideration of a request from the Oceana County Housing Commission, Manistee Limited, Divided, Divided, and Housing Association LP for a payment in lieu of taxes and a municipal services agreement for the purpose of the proposed 49 unit housing development. The Oceana County Housing Commission Manistee Limited Division Housing Association LP 
is requesting a 4% pilot and a $200 per unit MSA for their proposed 49 unit housing development on Water Street and River Street. The development will have 25 workforce housing units and 24 senior housing units. The developer to apply for a MSHD loan low income housing tax credit for the project. At this time, council could take action to direct the city attorney to draft a requ requisite pilot ordinance and municipal services agreement of $200 per unit with a 3% annual increase. Is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion to table this um, for a future date. I'm not comfortable with the timeline in the project being being rushed. We have a motion to table. Mr. Taylor, do we require, I mean, Mr. Saylor, do we require a second? Your Honor, let me, uh, let me just look at my cheat sheet here. I think that that does not require a second. I'd ask for a second just to confirm that there's support for it. Is there a second? I'll make a second, Rubowski. Have a motion and a second. The motion will be tabled until the next regular meeting. Is that correct, Mr. Saylor? Yes. Thank you. Consideration of budget amendment 2021-2 for fiscal year end June 30th. Your, your Honor, just your Honor, if I could, well, uh, you, there was no uh, vote on that motion to table. I'm sorry, we need a vote. I, I apologize. Council member Martin Pontiac. Yes. Council Member Grabowski? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? No. Council Member Sipsik? Yes. Mayor Zelinski? No. Council Member Beaton? No. Council Member Bachman? I'm coming. No. Sorry about that. Motion failed. Thank you. We'll, we'll go on with it then. Thank you, Mr. Sanders, for thanking the group. We have background noise somewhere. Somebody has some background noise. Can you turn that off? Okay, thank you. Okay, I gotta get back here. Okay, so we'll go back to a motion. Is there a motion? I'll this make the motion. Oh. I'll second it. I have a I'm motion. sorry, who, who made that motion? Dave Bachman. Bachman. I think Mr. Bachman. Is there a second? I'll second it. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yes. Just to, I'm, a, I'm really leaning toward approving it, which is why I um, feel this way. But my only hesitation is the Planning Commission has not had time to look at it. So here's my question to city staff, George Saylor. If we were to approve this tonight and the Planning Commission took a look at it and for some reason they recommended that we not approve this or they found a lot of things that were just not right with the project, are we obligated to go through with this? I mean, they have, if, do they have the final say on this? I just wanna make sure that I'm actually approving something that the Planning Commission has not yet seen and vetted. And I think that's an important step in this whole process. So I feel like I understand Jermaine's position totally. I feel pretty rushed too, but I wanna make sure that um, the Planning Commission understands that we need them to really take a good hard look at this quickly. Mayor, if I could answer that question or those questions. Go ahead. 
first of all, the only thing that the city would be doing would, would be approving a pilot or setting the stage to approve a pilot at a later date this month, as well as a municipal services agreement. And the pilot and the, and the municipal service agreement is for a specific project. Um, and if that project, if that site plan is not approved by the planning commission, then in my opinion, the pilot would have to be um, amended or withdrawn in some fashion. But you know, you can't you can't uh, have a pilot for a project that isn't going forward. Now, I'll certainly defer to the city attorney's view. I would I, I would agree completely with the city manager on that. Um, and remember, <clears throat> tonight all you're being asked to approve is the direction to myself to draft the pilot and draft the MSA, which we already have drafted, but it's not up for approval at tonight's meeting, but would be uh, subject to council's review and approval at a subsequent meeting. My concern is the information as far as being 25 workforce housing units and 24 senior housing units is a big change now for the public to absorb too. Um, although I'm also happy that we got that email later on this afternoon that said that there would be, I think a lot of people were worried about section eight tenants in the buildings. And apparently that's not something that's going to be allowed in the project. So those are two important things that I think the public needs to be aware of. Um, and I hope that uh, the fact that over half of the units are going for workforce. And I'm a big proponent of being able to walk to college, walk to work, and still live off campus, so to speak, in housing downtown. And I think that would really be a plus for our community to put that together. I'm done talking now. Somebody else can talk. Mr. Taylor, are, we under some, are they under some kind of a timeline to get their application in? It's my understanding that they want to apply for a, a funding round through MISHTA and the deadline to make the application is February 1st. Okay. Any other discussion or comments? I, I just have a comment. So basically because they're on a they're on a time frame, they're on a deadline for February 1st to get this in. We have to rush this through. Like we're so desperate a project somewhere i mean anything can just go anywhere I, that that's ridiculous you move the senior center to put senior housing back where the senior center was that's that's all i have to say i, I am not in support of this project and i don't feel like we should be rushed when they brought this presentation before us i mean council member beaton had to ask you know what the income was what the rent was like Nothing was forthcoming. It was senior housing. Then it got switched to workforce. Like, what is it? Any other comments? Well, this is uh, Mick Shemansky. You know, again, um, I, I think Manistee is without a doubt in need of housing, period. Uh, we certainly need senior housing and Again, if you're gonna have senior housing, you wanna put it in an area where they're comfortable, where they're, they are able to get around and your downtown or near downtown is one of the areas that is recommended by the Mishta people. And that's one of the reasons why they're looking at this location is because it is located close to amenities. Um, I, I, again, what we're voting on tonight isn't really the project. We're just voting on whether or not the city will allow for the pilot. In other words, that we're going to reduce our, our profits in order for them to be able to be able to go forward with this plan. There are a lot of questions. There's no guarantee that MISTA is going to accept this project and without funding, it's not gonna happen. We've seen too many opportunities for housing for, for our workforce and for our uh, seniors go by the wayside. I just don't wanna give up another opportunity. And, and that's why I, I think it's important for us 
to, to try to support it. We're gonna have plenty of time to look at the details and, and to actually make uh, votes uh, if we don't like what we see in the future. But uh, workforce housing is exactly what we need. You know, again, we're gonna be bringing in jobs. Where do they stay? Um, I think uh, the gentleman who bought uh, uh, the for property at 440 River Street basically said he's having a hard time finding a place. Well, imagine if you're on, you know, a, an income of under 25,000 or $30,000, how difficult it is. So I think we need it and we, we should uh, try to at least give this company an opportunity to make a presentation through the channels. Anyone else? Yes, I'm willing to vote on just the pilot and that tonight, if, as long as it's not agreeing to the whole project. I'll wait and, and uh, hold my vote for the project till later. Anyone else? Hearing none, please take the roll. Council Member Bachman? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Council Member Sipsik? No. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Council Member Gabowski? Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Consideration of Budget Amendment 2021 2 for physical year end June 30th, 2021. The City of Manistee is required by state law to ensure that actual expenditures do not exceed budgeted amounts. Over the course of the current physical year, unanticipated and under budgeted events and or council approved expenditures have occurred. The proposed budget amendments address expenditures associated with these events to ensure compliance with state statutes regarding appropriations. Mr. Bradford, do you wanna go over the changes please? Sure, Mayor. There's a, a number of budget amendments. Um, the first one that was in the memo is for the Department of Public Works, and it relates to some damages to a loader that occurred. Um, they were covered by insurance, but there was a delay in getting the bucket shipped to the city because of uh, construction of it. So those expenses uh, trickled into this fiscal year, but they were paid for by insurance. So we needed a budget amendment for that. Um, for the building inspector fund, we contracted those services out um, and we didn't have good numbers to prepare a budget on when we adopted the fiscal year 21 budget. Now that we've got six months in, I have a better idea of what those year end numbers might look like. And so that's what this budget amendment does is basically adopts a budget for the new building inspector fund. And those numbers are based on projections from what we've done year to date. There's been an awful lot of building permits pulled. So that those amounts may not be reflective of where we're at at the year end, depending on if that continues or not, but that's the best information that we have. And regardless of what the revenue is in the building inspector fund, um, it's a, we get a fixed percentage of that. So um, that's what that budget uh, amendment reflects. In the capital improvement fund, we needed to make an adjustment on that to reflect the tennis court project, which has been previously approved. At the last uh, budget amendment council did, we amended it for fund 275. This amends it for the capital improvement fund, which contributes uh, money for that. And that was approved when we uh, uh, agreed to the grant uh, agreement with the community foundation um, over a year ago. It's just that it's a timing for that. Uh, in the sewer department, the Arthur Street pump station project has been finished, but it also uh, spanned fiscal years and it was budgeted last year. So we needed to amend the budget for that. Um, again, those funds are sitting in fund balance because they weren't spent. So they're, they're available to pay for that. And finally, in the motor pool fund, um, council approved at their December meeting, replacing one of the police cars that was in an accident. Those will be covered by insurance, but this amendment uh, uh, puts those expenses into the motor pool budget. Are there any questions for Mr. Bradford? Hearing none at this time, council could take action to adopt budget amendment 2021-2 for physical year ending June 30th, 2021. So moved, Bachman. Seconded, Shemansky. have a motion and discussion, or motion and second and further discussion. Hearing none, please take the roll. 
Council Member Martin Pontiac? Yes. Council Member Grabowski? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Council Member Sipsik? Yes. Mayor Zelinski? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Bachman? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Consideration of amending the city fee schedule to include the downtown DDA dumpster refuge rates. Recommendation from the Ad Hoc Refuge Committee has been approved by the City Council and are being implemented. The City previously approved an ordinance amending amendments to Chapter 1060, Garbage and Rubbish Collection and Disposal, mandating the use of dumpsters in the downtown. Now the fee schedule for the new program, which was previously presented at a Council work session needs to be approved. At this time, council could take action to amend the city fee schedule to include the downtown DDA dumpster refuge rates. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. I'll second it, Grabowski. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I've got a question. Uh, if a restaurant is closed due to COVID, are they still going to have to pay these high restaurant rates that we've established? Or is there going to be a process for them to apply for a suspension of services? Council Member Shemansky, the, the ordinance doesn't um, have a provision to apply for, you know, a, a reduction in that service level. Um, right now, for instance, the Bluefish uh, contracts for its own dumpster, so they would make arrangements you know, with allied ways to do that. And certainly restaurants in the downtown district have the ability if they can find a spot to put a dumpster to contract it for themselves. But there's no provisions in the ordinance to do that. And we don't have that, you know, in the fee schedule at this at this point. So, um, and some of those uh, restaurants are still operating even though they are at a reduced volume with, with their takeout. Now, this is kind of similar to um, residents where if the water's on, they have to pay for refuse whether they're using it or not. We've tried to use that same principle here. Any other questions? Hearing none, please all. Council Member Bachman? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Council Member Sipsik? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Council Member Grabowski? Yes. Council Member Martin Boniak? Yes. The motion passed. Thank you. Consideration of a contract award and change order number one for the river walk damage and bank erosion repairs. A project has been designed and publicly bid to repair the damage river walk and shoreline caused from erosion within the, the Manistee Harbor. The project will provide heavy armoring and of the shoreline and repair damage facilities. Six bids were received with Sadorsky Brothers of Excavating LLC as a confirmed low bidder. In order to bring the project cost closer to the budget amount, a change order is recommended to include valued engineering items. The resulting contract amount will be $1,884,894. Proceeds from the 2020 capital improvement bond will fund the project. At this time, council could take action to award a contract to low better Sadorsky Brothers Excavating LLC in the amount of $1,999,854 and execute a change order number one in the amount of minus $114,960 and authorize the city clerk and mayor to execute the documents. Is there a motion? Mr. Schumanski, I'll make that motion. Mrs. Grubuski, I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion or comments? Mayor Bachman here. Um, I wasn't around when you did that motion. How much was the um, bond amount for in the length of time on that bond for the capital improvement? Council Member Bachman, um, we 
the bond that we issued was a combination of a refunding bond and a, and a capital improvement bond. The new money principal portion of the bond was 5.35 million and it's a 20 year bond. Thank you. Any other further questions or comments? Ken, um, I saw, you know, again, that it was uh, higher than our estimate. Uh, what area in the, the estimate was uh, um, under under uh, estimated by us when we went out to bid? This is Jeff McCoola, and I'll let Sean uh, look up the specific numbers, but there's really two parts to that answer. Um, the first answer was when we did the um, the estimates for the, the bond proceeds, we estimated a scope of work and we've got the project broken into three different segments, segment A, uh, B and C. Segment A is the portion of the shoreline that is west of the boat launch and wraps around to about the uh, stub pier. And at that time, the bank had, that section had some erosion, uh, but not what we would call significant. So we had put some money in there to stabilize that area. Um, over the past uh, six months, we've had much more erosion occur along those areas. And so we actually increased the scope of the project to uniformly armor that entire shoreline as opposed to um, as opposed to just spot repairing it. And at, at staff level, we discussed that spot repairing uh, could potentially show other erosion in other areas in the future and wouldn't be prudent to have the opportunity to fix it all once and one at one time and not have to go back. Um, so the estimates have been revised from when we sold the bond to just before uh, we bid the project. Sean, do you have, well, I, I guess I put it in my uh, agenda item, but I don't have that in front of me, what the final engineer's estimate is compared to what the uh, award is after change order one? Yeah, I had. Hope I'm off mute. Okay. Um, I think it's 1.8 million was our um, revised engineer's estimate doing the full length of the reach A, which we called it tier one, two, and three. There was levels of work we'd do in that reach A. And so with that work added in, like Jeff said, we added about 1.8 million. And our numbers, just to get back to Jeff's point on the, you know, some of the specifics. In 2018, when we were doing the dock work, we had Fisher Contracting in town, and they were, you know, they were they're a marine contractor, they're very familiar with doing the work, and so I I asked them because we were just in the early throes of this project, you know, for some unit costs and you know, be conservative with it, and they gave me and the, the main driver in this is the rock. You know, the rock is the main item in this whole project. And they gave us some costs of 120 to do it from land and 100 uh, or 100 to do it from land and like 125 a ton to do it from, you know, from the uh, water. And then we rounded those up a little bit and thinking those were conservators numbers in 2018. And uh, quite frankly, this they were low. I mean, I can't, I have no other way of, uh, you know, stating it than those numbers came in a little bit higher. And they weren't a lot higher. They're probably five to ten dollars a ton, but you know, over that quantity, it's a lot. Um, so it's two main drivers. One is the additional scope of work to take. You know, take. Um, we have an opportunity cost to get that reach A completely shored up, and we thought that was important to do it because we won't be back in here doing work like this in any of our lifetimes. Um, this is you know very unique situation, and the other part was just little low numbers on the on the rock in our estimate, you know, and that's, I'll put that on my end. It's a two year old estimate and we were low back in 2018, a little bit. Thank you. So also anticipating uh, Councilwoman Beaton's uh, questions when we do these bids, there's a pretty big spread on these, on these bid numbers. And uh, when we talk to the contractors, 
specifically this type of project and and i've got a uh, a lot of background in in doing shoreline work in my past but a lot of this is how the contractor approaches to to install all this work and like sean said if they contractor uh primarily does their work from a barge they have to either barge in stone or they truck in stone and then have to put it on a barge. And so that typically puts those unit cost of stone um, 20 to 30% higher. Um, we, we met with, well, we met online and had uh, conversations with Swarovski brothers on how they approach this project and they're approaching it from the land side. Uh, so that shows a little bit on their, uh, you know, their proposed technique on why those numbers are a little bit lower. Um, but also they don't have as much on their MOBE costs. They don't have housing and, and a lot of the other expenses that out of town contractors have. Um, and there's also a massive demand on, on the stone uh, because there's so much revetment work going on along the shorelines. And that just tends to, to drive up prices I do have a question that you didn't think of. Okay. <laughs> but I thought of it as you were talking. Thank you, Jeff. Um, where do they get the stone from? Uh, there's a number of quarries in the tip of the mitt that source the stone. And uh, I don't know exactly which quarry specifically that Swarovski sources from, but um, my anticipation or what, what he explained to us is that um, I, if this contract gets approved within the next couple of weeks, they'll start trucking in materials and staging it. And, um, they are planning to start work on this yet this winter, uh, very soon, probably this month so that they can get as much done before the weather shuts them down because we've got a, um, we've got a deadline within the contract to get the river walk open before January or uh, July 1st. So hopefully without any unforeseen issues, um, we at least can get that section opened up and, and restore it for the public. And then the rest of the contract will take longer into the summer. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? Hearing none, please take the roll. Council member Beaton? Yes. Council member Bachman? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Council Member Sipsik? Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac? Yes. Council Member Grabowski? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Consideration of applications to board of commissions. The city clerk has taken action to advertise vacancies on the board of review, compensation commission, downtown development authority, Pay Commission, Tree Commission, and Zoning Board of Appeals. Mayoral, appoint, Mayoral and Manager appointments require a motion, second, and council voted support. Nominations for council appointments do not require a second. After all nominations are made, council votes on nominees until one nominee receives majority vote. The following applications have been received. <clears throat> Excuse me, Downtown Development Authority, one interested member vacancy term ending 6-30-22. Applicants must have interest in property in the downtown district. This is the manager appointment, Mr. Taylor. Yes, I would ask that city council appoint Annie Jacobson to the uh, vacant interest um, position. I would note that she's an employee of West Shore Community College. She's... Um, her role is the director of enrollment and um, student engagement, and she'll be working at least one day a week out of their new building on River Street. Uh, she's presently enrolled in the Chamber's leadership class, uh, so I think she's a very capable uh, uh, candidate for this position. Thank you. Was there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Um, second. I'll second it, Grubowski. 
We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please take the roll. Council Member Grabowski? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Council Member Pontiac? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Council Member Bachman? Yes. Council Member Sipsik? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Next, presentation of an annual State of the Street report. City staff. Can I share my screen? Yes, um, let me get that set up. You should be able to. <clears throat> well, that's a presentation. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Okay, this is uh, Jeff McCool again, and um, Sean and I are gonna kind of walk through this. We've been doing this for a number of years. We've been putting out a, uh, a four-page document titled The State of the Streets. And each year um, we try to give an annual report or we do provide an annual report that gives specific data on the street as an overall network. And then we also break it down into the local and major streets. And this is available to the entire community. Um, but specifically, um, this is data that we use on an annual basis as we go into the budgeting process to um, evaluate, select, and plan for projects. On this slide, uh, the pie chart shows the overall street network. So we've got just under 50 miles of locals or of city streets. And that overall network, the current um, status is that about 45% of them are considered poor condition and about 45% of them are considered good condition with 10% being fair. The numbers that are in parentheses that you see are based on a unified system uh, that is used throughout the state of Michigan and is being used up throughout the country. And that's called the PASER analysis. PASER stands for the Pavement Evaluation, and uh, I'm sorry, the, the Pavement Surface, in, or Pavement Surface Evaluation Report. And that is, that is a, like I said, it's a unified system, but it doesn't take all aspects of the pavement. It, it's simply a visual condition of the uh, pavement structure. And the city has uh, a couple staff members that are trained and certified to do these evaluations. And so every fall uh, they drive around and they um, literally give a one through 10 rating to every street segment. And every street segment goes from intersection to intersection. So you take a street like Maple Street, it might have uh, 12, 14 different segments in it, but every one of those are given a one to 10 rating. Uh, one being uh, the worst and 10 being the best. If you look at the bar chart that's on the screen, um, this represents the past five year history of miles of streets that are in good, fair and poor condition. And what you will see in that is in the past uh, five years, the amount of streets that are in good condition has substantially increased, um, gone from 8.4 to 20.8. The fair streets have gone from 14.2 down to 4.7. And then the poor streets have stayed relatively flat. The reason for that is, uh, and we've got a slide later on that, that goes into details and there's details in this document, but the reason why you see such a change in the good and the fair is because when you adopt an asset management 
concept, we are trying to impact the overall health of the street network with the money that's available um, in the best way possible. And so we spend money on preventative maintenance and we also spend money on um, heavy rehab, which is, for an example, taking a fair street that we can do a mill, basically grinding off uh, some of the pavement, and paving new pavement on top of that. And so those type of treatments can move a, pro a street segment from fair into good. In order to move a, a street from poor into good, you have to reconstruct that. And reconstruction takes three to four times as much money for the same segment. So this, I believe, shows pretty uh, dramatically um, the effects of the asset management program that we've been doing for the past five years. Sean, next slide, thanks. So again, our streets are broken into two different classifications. The first is the major streets. And then next we'll follow up with the local streets. The major streets total about just less than 20 miles. And currently uh, we've got about 39% of those that are in poor condition. And we've got about 48% of those that are in good condition. And then 13% of those are in fair. Um, if you look at the bar chart on the left-hand side, that's a little bit different comparison. Uh, the purple are numbers from 2008. So 12 years ago, when the city first adopted um, the asset management program. And then the green is 2019 numbers and 2020 is in the blue. So you can see that since we started the asset management program, the number of miles of major streets that have gone from, um, that have gone, or that are classified in the good category have gone up substantially, almost three times. And almost exactly the mirror image is the fair streets have gone down from 8.2 to 2.5. And that's just what I was describing is, we have concentrated, uh, excuse me, on, on spending the money on those fair streets to get them up into the good. And then we're also spending preventative maintenance money to try to keep them up into that good category. In the poor column, uh, since 2008, we've gone from 7.2 in the poor, and we've actually gone up to 7.6. And one of the things, and I say this every year, but one of the things that you've got to remember is all the money that we're spending in in some years, it's hundreds of thousands, and many years, it's millions of dollars. Um, if we spend a, a million dollars on a half mile of, of road to make it go from poor to good, in the major streets, we still have 19 and a half miles that are still aging, that are still deteriorating, and they continue to slip down those columns. If you go to the... Um, to the chart on the right-hand side, um, that's the average PASER rating, for, again, from that 2008 to 2020. And so um, it's increased, and you can see that it's kind of a wavy action. It, it, it's gone up, it's come down a little bit, it's gone back up. And overall, we've gone from a 5.3 to a 5.8. So we've shown improvement, but the money that we've been spending on the major streets and a, on the overall major street network has kept it a little bit flat, maybe just, just improving slightly. If we go to the local streets, thank you. You'll see that the pie chart shows that 50% of our local streets are still considered poor condition. 42% of those are rated in good condition and 8% are in fair condition. Again, if you look at the, the bar chart, um, local streets, that's the comparison of 2008 versus 19 and 20. The good streets have gone up tremendously on our local streets from 2.1 to 
the fare streets have gone from uh, 5.5 down to 2.2. So it follows the same trend I was talking about with the um, major streets. But our poor streets have actually gone down quite a bit from 20.3 miles down to 13.5. And what's happening is we have spent almost as much money as we can to bring our fare to the good. And now uh, what we're left with is candidates that are in that poor condition. And so now we've got to spend money on uh, full reconstruction. And we've also um, paired up the street work with utility upgrades. And so wherever we need to bury uh, new water mains or upgrade sanitary sewers with replacements or installing new storm sewer, um, we're actually reconstructing those streets completely. And we're proportionally allocating money between the utility funds for the utility upgrades. And then the balance is coming out of the streets to finish the roadways out. So we're, um, so the good news is we've, we've, we're have we starting to get into some of those um, poor streets. But the bad news is because it costs two to, or I'm sorry, three to four times more to do it, there will be less impact that we'll see on an annual basis. Um, looking at the local street PASER ratings from uh, 2008 to 2020, we've actually shown um, what I would consider a substantial improvement from an average 3.7 up to a 5.1, but we still have 50% of those streets that are poor and, and need attention. Um, over to the right-hand side of this slide, you'll see that work that was completed in 2020 included uh, several blocks of Third Avenue, uh, several blocks of Second Avenue, um, quite a bit of First Avenue uh, from Fremont all the way to the dead end, um, several blocks of Melitzer, Hughes Street, Fremont, and Hastings. And that was money that city council specifically allocated from the oil and gas fund to reconstruct local streets. And we were able to uh, blend those local assets with the rural development loan that we did to install storm sewer in these areas and expand the project beyond even what um, council had allocated. So um, we've had some significant improvements in the past year. The next slide shows basically where those projects were at. So the, uh, the green are the projects that we completed. I didn't mention that the one segment of major streets that we completed this year was A Street from Davis to Hopkins, basically A Street Hill. And the reason why we upgraded that um, section of road work was because in the current fiscal year, we are planning to upgrade or completely reconstruct A Street from Hopkins to US 31, but that area has no storm sewer and we needed an outlet for that water. So we were able to rebuild the hill um, on A Street from Davis to Hopkins and provide an outlet storm sewer uh, so that when we do that next project, we've got a place for all that water to go. Next slide, Sean. So work that's planned for yet this year um, includes a, several more local streets with Jackson Street, um, the entire length of Jackson from Washington to Cleveland, and Van Buren Street, um, which actually goes from Jefferson to Cleveland, and then there's one block of Jefferson that connects them. And like I described earlier, um, that area is in need of a water main upgrade. So we are gonna build new water main in that area and improve the uh, fire capac firefighting capacity uh, for that neighborhood, but specifically for the commercial buildings in there like Olson Lumber. And as a result, we'll have uh, brand new streets uh, built over the top of that. And then also uh, the second group of projects includes the uh, complete reconstruction of Ramstel Street from 5th to 7th, uh, three blocks of 7th Street, and then a small segment of 5th Street. 
Um, and those are being reconstructed because we are um, we are building a new interceptor sewer from Ramstill and Fifth Street to the treatment plant, and that's the route that they're taking. So um, again, that'll have reconstruction and impact on the local streets, and the majority of that uh, work is being paid for through the rural development bond. Um, and incidentally, that project's currently out for bid. So we plan on uh, beginning that this spring. Next slide. Uh, so in the blue are the, the projects that I just described. Uh, I did forget, sorry, that there's one segment of major streets, that segment of A Street from Hopkins to 31. But you can see the, the three projects that we've got planned and are being designed right now um, for 2021. The yellow streets on the map represent projects that are planned in our transportation improvement program, our TIP, and also our capital improvement program uh, in the utilities for 2022. And then the uh, orange or rust colored projects are projects that are um, planned for 2023. So we are, we literally just finished this up. Uh, it's July or January 5th, we finished this up yesterday and today, and we'll be getting copies of those available for the public. And then um, I believe the city manager distributed uh, copies for you. So I would be happy to answer any questions that you have. Are there any questions? Hey, Joe, when is the US 31 project supposed to begin? <clears throat> Which US 31 project? Well, from the, the bridge area in particular, 31 bridge project. The, okay, the upgrade to the Memorial Bridge on US 31 is planned for um, construction of 2023. And so when you look at this map, um, we are still negotiating with MDOT for upgrading Memorial Drive and Washington Street as part of that, um, part of the detour route for that project. And then, and, to, and also in anticipation of that, we have been successful in securing uh, grant money to upgrade Maple Street Bridge in 2022 so that um, what we've got planned is we're going to do the work on Maple Street Bridge in 22, do upgrades to the detour route, and then we have some utility work associated with, on Washington Street, and those will be done in 22 in anticipation of the state doing their project in 2023. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, well, Jeff, the, the state's going to do from, from US 31 to from... Uh by Burger King to the south limits uh, in 23 years, are, are we involved with it too? No, they are, what they've got planned right now is just work on structural work on Memorial Bridge. It's just the bridge itself. And then um, they have committed to securing some funds to help us upgrade the detour, the local detour route within the city. And we're still negotiating um, the extent of, of what they're going to participate in. I was told by the region manager that they have put into their transportation improvement program um, upgrading 31 from basically Hill Road into the city. But I think that's, he just put that into their five year plan. So at best, I think that would be 2026 at this point. Okay. Jeff, I have a question. Sure. When it comes to our good roads, like I'm referring to First Street, what kind of maintenance schedule do we have to keep those roads good? Well, what we're, I mean, we do normal things like street sweeping and cleaning the storm sewer catch basins, but the annual crack sealing program is the best deterrent that we've got to keeping uh, water 
from penetrating that asphalt and getting into the base and creating potholes. So um, we've allocated uh, funds and have trained our staff to do crack sealing on an annual basis. And at, at some point when those uh, pavements start to deteriorate beyond when um, the crack ceiling is efficient anymore, then we can look at uh, different treatment options after that. And one could be the ultra thin slurry seal like we did on uh, Cherry, Maple, River Street and other you know, major streets in the community. Um, or it could be a candidate for a uh, mill and fill as well. Okay. Just <clears throat> curiosity, how, what's the life expectancy of uh, new construction? Um, that's, <laughs> there's much debate and much data on that. Um, a new road should last 20 years if you perform the proper maintenance techniques on it, like crack sealing. Um, but what we see in Northern Michigan, especially with our free saw cycles, is with brand new pavement over brand new base, that after um, 10, 12, 14 years, we start seeing that pavement start to deteriorate and break up. And so, you know, it's, it's interesting because before 2028, the city of Manistee was on the same program as the state of Michigan and the same program as the federal highway system where we paved new roads and then we just let them go. And we kept focusing on the worst roads and, and putting money into the worst roads. The asset management has really reversed that, that uh, whole management process where we're spending our first money on keeping those good roads good for as long as we can and then upgrading the, the fair roads as we can and then start digging into the poor roads and upgrading those. So, um, and, and I will tell you that every road segment is different, even in the same community. Uh, sometimes it depends on uh, the contractor on the asphalt they used on the oil. And even when it meets the same specifications, I've seen two different asphalt mixes paved right up against each other within months of each other. And when you get 10, 15 years out, they completely age different. Thank you. Any You're other questions? So Jeff, I, I see that, you know, you have three years up, but I thought it was a five year uh, a plan. What about the other two out years? Well, we do, we do plan five years out. Um, but we feel like we've got certainty about three years out. So that's what we put in into this document. Um, when you get into that fourth year and that fifth year, there's a lot of unknowns on funding resources. And there's also a lot of unknowns on uh, utility requirements. And so um, those are a lot more uh, fluid, I would say, in years four and five. But we certainly have. Uh, have four and five on that planning horizon. And, and honestly, what we have found in the past couple of years, when city council put money in from the oil and gas fund, when city council, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, allocated the, the <coughs> proceeds from the city property sales, you know, and then the state of Michigan uh, passed legislation that gave us more uh, local money from our Act 51 funds, We've actually had a pull from years four and five into our one, two, and three years because we had uh, additional money available and, and we had to pull some of those candidates. So um, when we submit that five-year transportation improvement plan to you during the budget process, um, I can almost guarantee by the time the July 1st comes around, we'll be revising that and updating that and uh, trying to move as much forward as we can and improve as much as we can. And, um, you know, we work with the engineers to stay up on that on a, almost on a monthly basis year round. Cause it looks like you've gotten a lot of the really, really bad streets repaired, especially the North side, but there are some significantly 
uh, deteriorating streets without curbs uh, between uh, Cypress and Maple uh, on the you know Fourth Street for one third a little bit. Those are those are problems. I think even for your own plow guys because uh, you can barely get a plow down that street with parking on one side of the street. So it would be nice to see that street fixed and widened sometime yeah. in my lifetime. Yeah, I, and I absolutely agree with you. And actually, um, 4th Street and 2nd Street, I believe, are within our five-year, six-year tip. Um, the issue that, we're, that we've been dealing with is the, the needs of the road are there 100%. 4th Street's the narrowest street in the city, and uh, even with alternate parking, it's very challenging for the plow drivers to keep those streets clean. But we also have undersized water main underneath both of those street segments. And so um, we are uh, trying to forecast out when, when we'll have money available on the water side to be able to upgrade the water part of that so that we can use the street money to upgrade the street side of it. Um, but that's absolutely on the planning horizon, and uh, when we can, when we uh, are able to fit the pieces together, uh, that will be a planned project. Both of those. Thank you. Anybody else? Hearing none. Thank you, Jeff and Sean, for your presentation. Much appreciated. Concerns and comments. Citizens' comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment on municipal services activities or areas of city involvement. Citizens in attendance via phone shall be recognized by the city clerk for comments limited to five minutes. Letters submitted to council will not be read. Every person waiting in the virtual waiting room will be called out by the last four digits of their telephone number. Heather, would you... Um, Go ahead with that and then move on to officials and staff and council members. Yes, I will. I see that we have three members of public um, out there. If you would like to raise your hand, if you would like to speak, I will try to unmute, unmute and see if you have comment. I have telephone number 6203. Do you have a comment? Thank you, but nothing at this time. Thank you. Telephone number ending in 1515. Do you have a comment? Hearing none. I, oh, go ahead. I do not have a comment at this time. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> City manager. Nothing at this time. City attorney. Nothing, Heather. Thank you. Finance director. Nothing, Heather. Thank you. DPW director. Nothing further. Thank you. Police chief. I just have one thing. I wanted to real quick mention the retirement of Sergeant Tom Bruce. After 25 years of service, Tom has announced his retirement, which is effective January 7th. Uh, 25 years in any career, let alone law enforcement, is quite the feat. So. Just want to publicly acknowledge his accomplishment. Fire chief. Nothing, Heather. Thank you. City engineer. Uh, just one item. Um, just to follow up with our presentation, it's I consider this tip season. This is when we um, just before the bid, the budget goes into um, place. We um, we have a lot of our meetings to set to re kind of reload the tip with. Project. So if, you, if anybody has any comments or thoughts on street, um, you know, please feel free to share those with Jeff or Matt or I. Thank you. Council Member Bachman. I just want to say congratulations to Sergeant Bruce on his retirement and good luck in his future endeavors. Other than that, nothing left. Heather, thank you. Council Member Beaton. I don't have any comments at this time. Council member Sipsek. Uh, might as well start the year out right. Are we any closer to figuring out the, the blight ordinances that we're changing? We are, uh, Council member Sipsek. I'm working with uh, the city attorney. Uh, we've got one draft, we've worked through it today. 
I anticipate having language change and, and having something very soon uh, in regards to an ordinance that allows our, or removes obstacles and allows our officers to uh, more efficiently enforce. On the other side of things, working with the Blight Ad Hoc Committee, we're looking at trying to come up with a list of resources that we can provide our citizens in regards to those who can, can't physically or financially remedy blight. Um, I think our vision is to have, instead of just writing everyone tickets, also have the ability to refer them to additional resources for help, if that makes sense. Okay, and then um, just another question for you. Uh, can we uh, get something around for the equipment that you and, and Mark need for your vehicles? Like a price on that? I mean, that uh, Dave brought that up before Christmas. The radios. Yeah, certainly that's something I can coordinate with the city manager on and, and come up with something. I'm under the understanding that you can get radios from 911 for free. Is that true? Right. A request has already been made for the radio through 911 just in advance. It's a matter of um, installing the lights and a vehicle and what the cost would, of that would be. Okay, that's all I had. Council Member Grabowski. Yes, there's two, two or three things. Uh, I'd like to thank the Ramsdale Theater for supplying that lamplighter statue. I know a lot of people took advantage of it down on River Street. I ha I'm happy the tree didn't take it out. Uh, that really, I am suppose everybody's happy about that. So I'm thankful for that. Also, Jeff could, I mean, the sidewalks aren't too bad. We, I wouldn't buy them today on the bridge, but uh, I've seen a couple people fall down uh, when we were having the storms. I don't know if we get to uh, shovel them off or what uh, what do we do down there? But you know, some of the people are falling, and we needed better uh, cleaning on the sidewalks. Okay. Understood. Thank you. And also, I'd like to thank Tom for his service. I was out shooting with him the other day, and he's happy to start his new venture with the tribal police. So I'm happy for him. Take care. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Uh, I have no nothing. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Shemansky. Uh, uh, just kind of a follow on with the, with the snow and sidewalks. Uh, there's a couple of places that have been plowing their parking lots onto the sidewalks, which makes it a little bit challenging uh, when you're trying to walk on a sidewalk. You literally have to go into the streets. And I'm not talking, you know, a couple inches, I'm talking, you know, four, five, six foot snow banks. Um, I'm not sure if, if we have anything on the books um, and I can kind of give you a few of the locations, but it's, it's not uncommon for people to, you know, tunnel out of their houses and then put all the snow on the sidewalk. So uh, just FYI. And again, my th thanks to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Bruce for his service to our community and law enforcement. That's it. Happy New Year, everyone. Mayor Zelensky. Thank you. I'd also like to congratulate Tom Bruce on his retirement. Good luck to the future adventures. Um, don't be a stranger. I know you'll probably be in the area for a while. Thanks again, Tom, for all your hard work and all your many years of service. With that, I have nothing else. I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a I'll motion. Make a motion. <laughs> I got lots of motions to adjourn. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. We're adjourned. <laughs>